All right. Hello again, everybody. This is Mike with the NetPick Center Circle. In this week's Options Trade of the Week, we're going to take a little bit different approach than what we've done over the past couple of months. We're actually going to walk through our XLE Iron Condor that we put on a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to talk about how we manage that trade here this week because those options are expiring here this week. We'll talk about that in more detail. But then we're also going to talk about a new trade that we put on here earlier this week as more of an adjustment to the Iron Condor. So we'll spend some time walking through uh, both trades here over the next few minutes. That way you can see the process of managing these trades from start to finish. So let's start out by taking a look at our initial XLE iron condor. You'll see that it is pulled up here on the page. We are utilizing the April 20 monthly options. Those are expiring here today. When we put this trade on a couple of weeks ago, we had more of a neutral outlook on XLE. I was expecting some muted price action, some sideways consolidation. In fact, we got the exact opposite of that. We saw a pretty big breakout to the upside and now oil, looking at the futures, we're at multi-year highs. So we were dead wrong on direction. The beauty of trading a risk-defined spread like an iron condor is we know what our worst case scenario is right up front when we put the trade on. I could not have been more wrong on my outlook for XLE. We ended up losing $53 per spread. Okay, we basically took a full loss. I was dead wrong. This is the worst case scenario on XLE. So when we put this position on initially, we sold the 69 and a half, 70, uh, 70 and a half call spread. I want to make sure I got those strike prices right. And then on the downside, we sold the 66 and a half, 65 and a half put spread. What that does is it creates a profit window. Instead of expecting a big directional move, we wanted XLE to stay inside of a defined range. Essentially, we we're looking for XLE to stay in between our short strike. So in between the 69 and a half strike on the call side and the 66 and a half strike on the put side. Looking at the current price of XLE, it's now up over 73. Okay, so there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, the short put spread were perfectly fine for us. We, we kept the entire uh, premium on the put side. We took a full loss on the call side. That's the one that got us into trouble because when you sell a call spread, you're expecting that stock to move lower. The exact opposite has happened. So what we did, we have to close this trade out because it is expiring today and we currently own a short in the money option. Our short call, the 69 and a half call, is now in the money. If we hold this expiration, okay, we're going to deal with assignment risk. I don't want to have to worry about that. So what we did here earlier in the week, and we sent this out here midweek to our Options Express members, um, we talked about how to manage this trade. When it goes completely wrong on us, we have to make sure we close out of the trade. So what I sent out here earlier this week is we need to buy back the call spread. Instead of closing this thing out as an iron condor, we don't necessarily need to do that. Number one, it's harder to get filled on an iron condor, and it's more expensive. If I try to close out all four different options at the same time, the commissions are more expensive. So we only close out the call side because that's the side that was in trouble. So what we did is we bought back the 69 and a half, 70 and a half call spread uh, for about a buck. Okay, and it essentially gave us a, you know, a full loss on the position. So we just we currently still have the short put spread on. That's essentially worthless. That did exactly what we wanted it to do. So I can hold it to expiration. Let the whole thing go away. It'll all expire worthless. I don't have to pay the commissions to close out of the trade. And because we bought back the call side, now I'm essentially flat. The position is done with. So it's no fun to take a loss. Obviously, none of us like that, but it's going to happen. It's part of trading. We are not going to be right 100% of the time. Fortunately, we've had a really good track record on the trades of the week. So um, this is our first time where we're really dealing with a position that's in trouble. Now, my outlook, when I take a loss like this, I have to reevaluate my outlook for that stock or ETF. Has anything changed? Well, for me, my outlook has changed, right? I went from more of a neutral outlook to now I believe we're in an overbought condition in the near term. I'm not necessarily saying oil's not going to head higher from here. I just think in the near term, over the next couple of weeks, we could certainly see a period of consolidation or even a pullback to the downside and start to, uh, start to digest some of the big gains from the last few weeks. So in order for me to try to battle back from the loss on the iron condor, I'm not just going to walk away from XLE and say, well, I took a loss. I'm not going to trade it anymore. 
there's still some opportunity for me to start battling back a little bit. So now because my outlook has changed, and this is where our new trade of the week comes into play here this week, we're going to take a look at selling a call spread on XLE. Let me go over to just the daily chart of XLE, just so we can get a quick visual. This is the move to the upside that I was talking about. You guys have probably seen it. If you've been tracking the markets here the last few weeks, oil's been on everybody's radar. It's just it's been a very active area of the market. We've seen a very impressive move to the upside. If we go back historically, especially with some of the commodity markets, you'll see that when they make big moves like that, whether it be to the upside or to the downside, they don't tend to stay that way for long. You can go back just over the past number of months, and you, you tend to see waves back and forth. That's why... Earlier in the week when I took a look at this daily chart and saw that we are very extended from all the moving averages, we're very overbought, I, I looked at that as an opportunity to lean a little bearish. Now, I'm not just going to come in and buy a long put because the long put only gives me one way of making money if XLE moves to the downside quickly. So instead of jumping in with both feet and getting very aggressive on the downside, let's I, I want to go ahead and sell a call spread. That's what I sent out to our students. I said, okay, let's go ahead and sell a call spread here. We can lean a little bit bearish, but by selling the call spread, it gives me a little bit of a neutral kicker. If XLE does not move to the downside immediately, I can still make money in a sideways move from the time decay adding up and potentially from volatility decreasing. So I just give myself more ways of making money. So the trade that we put on, and let me go ahead and get this order up. We utilized uh, on this one, we went out a couple weeks. We went out into the May 4th weekly options. They now have 14 days left um, on those options. And we came in and we sold the 75, 76 and a half call spread. So I'm going to right click on the 75 calls, go to sell and go to vertical. That's going to pop up an order down at the bottom. I'm going to adjust the strikes here a little bit just so I can get the trade up that we sent out to our students. We sold the 75 call and we bought the 76 and a half call to make it a risk to find trade. If all I did is sell the naked call, I have unlimited risk. I just don't want to have that type of scenario, especially in this type of a market. I would rather have a risk to find trade, even though I'm going to take a smaller profit potential on this trade. Um, I like that scenario. I just, I don't like the big risk. You know, if I had taken uh, the big risk on the iron condor, it would have been a much larger loss. But in reality, I only lost around $50 per spread. So very small loss. Now on this trade, when we sent it out, obviously the market has been moving here the last 24 hours or so. Um, we sold this spread for 45 cents. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that number in that's the um, that's our fill price on this one so what we did is we collected 45 cents or 45 dollars per spread that's the most i can make on this trade i'm risking 105 dollars so i'm right around a risk two to make one scenario the reason i'm willing to accept that is because we have so many ways of making money on the trade look at my break even point it's at 75.45 okay it's just taking my short call strike the 75 call, we're adding on the 45 cents that I'm collecting to put on the trade, that gives me my break-even point. I don't care if XLE moves up, down, or sideways from here. As long as it stays below that number, I can make money in all three types of scenarios. I also make money from time decay adding up and from volatility decreasing. So now all of a sudden, I give myself five different ways of making money on the trade. The beauty here also is I'm risking $105. If I'm dead wrong again on XLE for the second time in a month, the most I can lose is $100, $105 to be exact. So it's a, it's a very good way to act on my outlook for XLE in a very limited risk type of scenario. Now, if I make $45, let's just say that XLE does move to the downside like we anticipate. If I can book the entire $45 profit, now all of a sudden I basically get back to break even. I'm able to battle back from the loss on the iron condor. Okay, so notice how I'm not getting I'm not getting scared away from the losing trade. I'm just looking at it as it was an unfortunate situation. It didn't work out. My outlook didn't play out. I move on to the next trade. So many retail traders get hung up with the losses and say, oh, I'm never trading that product again, or I'm never trading another iron condor again. It didn't work. Bottom line is any market that you trade, any system, any strategy, you're going to have winners, losers, and break-evens. It's how you handle those trades. That's what's going to separate you from all of the other retail traders that are not making it. Right, so 
if we're controlling our risk, if we're not taking position sizes that are too big for our account size, and the way that we know that is if the outcome of one trade is going to impact you and prevent you from taking the next trade, then you're trading way too big. In this case, the iron condor was just a drop in the bucket. It was just the next trade for me. By keeping my loss small, notice here on this next trade, this next short call spread that we're looking at selling here, if this one wins, I'm right back to the break-even level. I'm able to battle back very quickly. As retail traders, it's so easy to get caught up in the fear of losing money. And so many people are facing situations where their losses are uh, multiples of their winning trades. And that's so hard to battle back from. If you take one big loss, and it's going to take you five or six winning trades to battle back, you're doing it all wrong. So in this case, we want to make sure that we're managing our risk appropriately. And in this case, you can clearly see, I mean, the market's very active again today. We sold it for 45 cents. It's now trading for 28 cents. So I've already made some money back. Okay, I've already got around a 17 or 18 cent profit. So out of the 50 cents that I lost on the iron condor, I've already made back 18 cents. So the crucial piece to the puzzle here, if you're brand new to options, I'm not expecting you to fully understand iron condors and, and short vertical spreads in detail. But what I'm trying to do is show you by having a bigger toolbox, by having a, a number of different option strategies that you can go to, there's ways that we can react to any type of market condition, good, bad, or ugly. Okay, in this case, we're utilizing our toolbox to try to battle back after a losing trade. And we'll continue to track this one. We'll see how it reacts here over the next uh, over the next couple of days, uh, and really into next week specifically. We've got 14 days left to expiration. The only time I can keep the entire profit or the entire um, the entire 45 cents that we collected to put the trade on is if I hold right up to expiration. We may not end up doing that. If we get a, a really nice profit here into next week, if I can keep 75% of what I collected to put that trade on. And if I can buy this thing back for around 11, 12 cents, I will look to do that here over the next week or so. So that's how we will manage the trade. As always, if you have any questions on how to manage the trade or if you need more details on why we structured the trade the way that we did, let me know. Certainly send me an email. My direct email is mike at netpicks.com or just leave a comment here in the blog and we'll respond to you uh, right away. So just wanted to take a little bit different approach here on XLE uh, with our trade of the week. That way you can see things from start to finish, how we manage the, the winners, the losers. Um, it, I think that's really helpful uh, to see how an options trader reacts uh, to different types of conditions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I'll be back next week as we take a closer look at our open positions and then talk about our new trade of the week at that point. All right, so enjoy your weekend here upcoming, and we'll talk to you guys here next week.